While the NBA headlines are usually reserved for its stars, have you ever wondered what the average player in the NBA looks like? So many of the pundits dissect the true value of players like Harden, Davis, and LeBron, and how they'll never earn what they're truly worth. But what about the other players below that level? What if we went into Dr. Frankenstein's lab to create the exact average player? What would he look like? If you had a grasp on what the median is, would you be so quick to criticize a player for being bad? Would his contract be seen as a better deal in your eyes? With the help of Arturo Galletti on the stats and Seth Partnow on the contracts, we calculated what the 50th percentile production looks like by each position. So, the next time you want to claim Norris Cole sucks, think again. He is simply doing the work of an average point guard and getting paid less for doing so. Let's start off by looking at point guard. By plugging in the numbers into Arturo's player ratings database, we see the average production at this crucial position. One thing that jumps out at me is the low three-point field goal percentage. No question you're going under a ball screen for an average point guard. And who most closely resembles the average point guard? Jordan Clarkson of the Lakers, who is coming off a very successful rookie year having made the all-rookie team. What we did next is look at the top 10 players at each position whose deviation from the average is lowest and plotted out their salary. When you compare their actual salary to the average salary at their position, you start to get a sense of who is a great value to their team and who is way overpaid. Amongst point guards, Clarkson is paid more than $3 million below the average salary, with Aaron Brooks and Ray McCallum Jr. not far behind. And who is most overpaid amongst point guards? While his stats were the second farthest from the average production, Avery Bradley's salary is over $3.5 million more than the average salary, indicating he had better up his game or start playing more shooting guard to earn those dollars this year. Moving to shooting guard, you can see the three-point percentage rises to about league average and the scoring gets into double figures. These are the 10 players who most closely resemble average production, with OJ Mayo topping the list and Dion Waiters the farthest from the average. And when we compare their salaries, OJ Mayo is by far the player with the biggest gap compared to average salary. And there were three players all paid way less than the average salary, starting with Evan Fournier, Tim Hardaway Jr., and Rodney Stuckey, three great overall values to their team. Small forward is an interesting position these days, as more and more of them are playing power forward for longer stretches. As a result, their production isn't overwhelming, and the average salary is the lowest of all the positions. Three players tied for best value amongst average small forwards since they all had the same salary last year. Omri Caspi, Jay Crowder, and Wes Johnson. The player with the worst value of the group is the guy whose numbers were most average, Danilo Gallinari. That said, he was coming back from a major knee injury and played really well over the last quarter of the season. The next guy in line was Paul Pierce, who got over $2 million more than the average salary for his average stats. Let's shift to the big men, where the average power forward had the lowest point, assist, and steal output of any position. And who most resembles the average NBA player at power forward? You guessed it, Quincy AC was actually an exactly average power forward for the Knicks last year. The rest of the field looks like this. And now let's look at relative value. AC tops the list of best value with Sean Williams of the Heat right behind him. On the other end of the spectrum, Brandon Bass made over $1 million more than the average power forward salary, with everyone else on this list making less than the average. What is even more surprising is that this position has the highest median salary among all the positions. And let's get to our final spot, the center. Interestingly, this position plays the most minutes per game, scores the most points, and grabs the most rebounds. And the player who most closely resembles these numbers is Derek Favors. And for his average production, he makes $8 million over the average salary. But that's not the biggest gap. Brooke Lopez scored well, but every other category was very close to the average production, 
and he earned almost $11 million more than the average. Al Jefferson and Nene are notable for their differences, and on the other side of the scale, Henry Sims gave the Sixers the most value, with Gorgie Deng not far behind. Now you've got a sense on what an average player produces and which players in the NBA fit into that category. Rather than criticize a player for lack of production, let's use this context to see if he's really a good bargain for what he does or if their GMs wish they could still amnesty players on bad contracts.